Welcome to Conversations. I'm your host, Charles Kirkland Jr. And once again, I'm here at one of my favorite times of the month where I get to speak to a filmmaker who's doing some wonderful things. Someone who's in our community right here in Washington, DC. And today I'm talking with an, an experienced filmmaker and producer. She's a, a director. She's her first feature called A Slim Piece will explore the relationships between Arab, Muslim, and Israeli women in the West Bank. It premiered at Tribeca, and she's gone on to do a number of, of other projects that have been in film festivals from Camden, International Film Festival, Atlanta, Jewish Film Festival, uh, San Francisco, Boston, Washington, D.C. Jewish Film Festival. She's really just been all over the place. Uh, she's the programming producer right now at the United States Holocaust Museum. Oh. Uh, so um, I, I'm just excited to have someone who's, who's had such a caliber, high caliber work with me today. Welcome to the show, Yael Lutwak. Good <laughs> nice. Good morning, Charles. Um, it's great to be here. Um, and uh, congrats on pronouncing my name. That's always fun. Um, yeah, I actually am not at the museum anymore. So I, I can share with you what I'm up to now. So it's all good. If that's cool with you. We'll get to um, that. We'll get to that in just a second. But the first my first question is always the same question to everyone that comes on. Tell us what it means to you to be named the filmmaker of the month for the month of May. It means a lot. Um, I'm really honored and humbled by it. Um, I also feel really lucky because I was looking at all the other filmmakers that have been honored before me and just seeing what great, meaningful work they do. And also our, our city and how much um, how much there is like creativity, but also connected to social justice. Okay, great. Well, now tell us, you're not at the Holocaust Museum anymore. What are you doing? Yeah, so I um, was really lucky. I, I, uh, I got to a place where I just, you know, thought I needed to continue to grow. And as you mentioned, I'm, you know, uh, obviously a producer and I, want to continue to create work and i um i actually was kind of nervous about quitting you know and in a in a pandemic um which uh but there i've been really lucky i i started right away filming a short documentary um the day that i resigned i got this email and a woman wanted to record her family's story which is really extraordinary so I'm excited about that. And then um, I got another email a week later that um, a really talented uh, filmmaker was working on a um, TV series project, a documentary. Um, and uh, his name is Sam Fader and he's a director and I'm producing um, the uh, work for him uh, for an episode, which um, I guess uh, is, is just also really exciting, so. Uh, you know I know we had to juggle some schedules a little bit to get in order to interview each other today to speak with each other today. Is this the project that you're working on right now that, that we're working? Yes, around? <laughs> yes, exactly. This is the project that I'm working on now. And um, so we're filming um, most a lot of May in New York, in DC. Um, and so it's, uh, it's just those filming days, I, you can't really schedule anything else. Because um, you don't know how long things are going to go. So yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to make sure that we had time to talk and that wasn't, you know, running around like a crazy person, like, you know, head cut off with camera crews and all that stuff. So Oh, we're, we're real happy that, you know, someone who's had such a long history here in the, in the city, I mean, you went to uh, Charles E. Smith Jewish Day School and you graduated from there and you've gone on, you've, you've been to the London Film School, uh, you lived in London, you, I mean, you lived in Europe, you lived in Israel, I mean, tell us some of what all these experiences brought to you as a filmmaker and, and, and how that has shaped your, your view of filmmaking? It's a great question. Um, I'm so lucky that I have had exposure 
right, to other cultures and other communities, other conflicts also. Um, so that has absolutely shaped me um, from the, you know, from a very young age, um, I had a connection to this country and also a connection to the Middle East. And as I grew up, I also then formed a connection to Europe and England. And as you noted, I went to film school there. So feeling comfortable in different countries and cultures allowed me to also um, have stories that I wanted to tell and things I wanted to say, right? And so that, um, that's that been a huge blessing. And then as the world changes and as I've gone gotten to do more projects, then you see parallels too, right? Like I never thought, for example, that I would see the same divisions in the Middle East as we see here in this country, the polarization, of people and communities and the inequality. Yeah. And um, so that's helpful, you know, as a filmmaker and as someone who tries in a, you know, not an annoying preachy way, not with an agenda, <laughs> but like I try to shed a light and in that way try and to do something that can create some social change. I'm glad you said that because uh, a lot of filmmakers, when they make documentaries, they come across as preachy and, you know, uh, uh, very dictatorial in their style. But I find yours is more conversational and more relational, which is uh, easier to easier to accept, easier to uh, relate to a person. So I, I like that a lot about your style. Thank you. That's a real compliment. And it means also that you really, um, see what I guess yeah I mean what I was trying what I've been always trying to do right you want to approach it with not only humility but you also I approach these films with a question I don't have the answer already so I it's a little terrifying sometimes because yes I have a plan and I, I have a schedule and I have a paper edit usually I, ha I have to go in with like does this story have a beginning middle and end but I do leave a lot open and people always surprise you. And that way I feel like the stories are, I'm not, I am not imposing myself and my worldview on people or the characters. Cause even though they're real people, they are still in the story. And so, yeah, I think then it can be more fun also. Like frankly, a little bit of comedy is not the worst thing in the world, so. <laughs> Has there ever been a time when I know you're planning planning out a story of how you want to deliver it? Has there ever been a time in because of the way your style works that the story that the person relates just makes you go in a whole different direction with your with your tale? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so, well, with Main Girls, the film that I co-directed with another local female filmmaker, Abigail Tannebaum Sharon. Um, so that film in the beginning, so that film is about teen girls in America in Maine, the whitest state in the country, meeting immigrant girls who have come to Maine. And in the beginning, the girls got along so well, there, there was no tension. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going up to Maine, filming week after week, and I don't think I have a story because the girls are like, yeah, great, great to meet you. It's like, but that's not interesting and there's no tension there and that is just storytelling wise it's boring right so but then what happened was that the world entered that in that in this case the world entered that film because we had the paris attacks and we had a muslim girl talking about being muslim and how she suddenly feels alienated and then that was that really began then that that story and then trump was elected a year later so right. when we did the epilogue and we filmed the girls a year later seeing this high school in america in the whitest country the whitest state in america and seeing these girls and how they responded to trump's election however you feel about it 
that was the epilogue and that was the third act in a way. So yes, I completely do give myself over to that in some ways, which I, which as I said, it is terrifying, but then I guess it's genuine. Yeah. Yeah. I, very good word. Genuine. <laughs> so, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about what you're doing now and, and what plans you have for the future? You, do you plan on staying in the documentary field? Do you think there may be a narrative out there that you want to tell? Uh, uh, just give us a little insight into what's in <laughs> Yale's future. Oh, God. Well, Charles, if you know, let me know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I really love, I know I am someone who needs to continue to, to create work that I hope will try and do something good for lack of a better expression and, um, you know, mission driven. Um, I... I, I think there is a real need actually for work that is inspiring and positive and comedy. <laughs> I think we really need it. Like it's, I don't think it's a surprise that like springtime for Hitler, if I think about Charlie Chaplin, if I think about these people that made this work, because unfortunately I feel like we are in a very dark time. And that's when you need also stories that will inspire us and that people can feel like they have some agency. And I don't think agency comes from big things, you know, like right. the film Schindler's List, obviously a total masterpiece, complete masterpiece. But there were also people in that period of time, the 30s and 40s, whether you're Jewish, not Jewish, lived in Germany, black in America. I mean, Ukraine, India, I mean, everywhere you look. And that's, I mean, I don't, that's not new, but it's gotten much worse. And I think we all deep down are feeling this zeitgeist for ourselves, for our kids. So we need work that's going to make us feel like we have, we have a shot, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so if anybody wanted to see your work, where could they go to see like a slim piece, main girls, things of that nature? Where could they go to see it? Thank you for asking. Yeah, so each film, because the world has totally changed in terms of documentary um, and streaming, so Main Girls is available on Vimeo on demand, and it's available on Canopy, which is another great platform. And uh, the last film I uh, co-directed, Guest House, is available on Good Docs. And Slim Piece actually was available for a long time on the Sundance channel and now is um, available online as well. Just go to slimpiece.org. Um, and so each film has found its own platform. Hmm. So, yeah. You, I meant to ask you because Slim Piece, I think you developed an organization out out of what out of that. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about Slim Piece organization? Sure, sure. It was a train I couldn't stop for like eight years. So when I made the film, um, which was so um, incredible as a first time filmmaker and went to Tribeca and Sundance Channel and all this great stuff because it was able to reach an audience, right? Which I don't take for granted. Um, but then I was asked by a philanthropist in England, um, Dame Hilary Bloom, a dame no less, to create more of these groups um, that we had created in the film. So the hybrid, right, it's, we created this group for the purposes of filming of Israeli, Palestinian, Jewish, Arab, Christian women to lose weight together. But then she said, you should create this group in real life. Yeah. not for filming. And so we did end up creating over 30 groups in Israel and Palestine in different two different cities. And we also created groups for girls, but it was not about losing weight at all. It's just about being healthy and feeling empowered. And, um, and then we brought it to the US in 2011. We created um, groups in six cities across the US. Um, and that was incredible as well. Um, and it's funny, I talking to you now, I realize like, I remember when we did it, <laughs> Charles, it was crazy, because they were like, Oh, that's so cute. You know, that's like a nice idea. Uh -huh. And they're like, but now, of course, like it, 
it just showed I, I was not surprised at where we are now because I was going to these cities and seeing the divisions between different communities. And, um, and so when we did the Boston group, that was our first group. And that's when the Boston Marathon tragedy happened. Wow. And so then that group was like so helpful for these women to have each other across social divides, across religious divides. And so when that group happened, we, we got a lot of press. And so then we created more groups. So, so, you know, that, that was a nonprofit that I was running, which I frankly, you know, I am not a nonprofit director. I have a huge <laughs> respect, um, because, uh, you know, I'm a filmmaker ultimately. And so after eight years, I just had to, you know, take off the hat okay, and, yeah. and go back to, but it was a real, it was such an incredible opportunity to see our country, you know, through mm-hmm. this this lens. And I still hear from people. Um, there's actually a woman who contacted me recently that she would like to do a group because they're having, they're getting, um, it's in um, Manhattan, Kansas, and other cities that are getting immigrants from like Afghanistan. And like, how do we welcome? And so anyhow, we'll see. It sounds like a very rewarding and necessary organization that, I mean, there's so much, like you said, crosstalk and division and that's going on in, in this nation and the, around the world. Something like this, I mean, it, it may seem small, but it sounds, it sounds like it's very important, very necessary. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, um, I, I'm sure that once you t- took that hat off, you pass it on to someone who can handle it. <laughs> yeah, I definitely had, I worked with great young women in that organization and dietitians and group facilitators. Um, and, you know, it's still there. Like we could still revive it too. It's been dormant for like a year and a half. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, yeah, <laughs> we'll see. I understand, I understand. All right, last couple of questions, finishing up. If someone wanted to get in contact with you about a film idea or wanted to work with you, is is it possible that someone could say, hey, Yale, help me, or uh, yes. I have an idea? How could they reach out to you? Anytime. I talk to people a lot. I think it's really, really, really important to say yes, basically, to that. I I have never actually said no when someone asks me if they want to talk and they 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 want to get some advice um, so they can anybody can hit me up <laughs> and where would they do that <laughs> where would they do that well they can ask they can get in touch with you guys and okay. then you guys can pass you can pass on my email no problem okay no problem no problem and lastly is there anyone you want to give a shout out to a thank you or Anything that you you want to talk about in this last 30 seconds? Aviva Kempner. She's a legendary documentary filmmaker in D.C. and is really one of the most generous people in our town to everybody and has tried in every which way, whether it's changing the name of the Redskins, whether it's D.C. right to vote, whether it's keeping open the Avalon movie theater, she is a real legend and hero and very generous. Like, as you asked me earlier, she helps a lot of people. So yeah. A, yeah. a shout out to her and a shout out to you guys that are highlighting all of DC's uh, filmmakers. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming out this morning and, and sharing your story with us. You, you are an inspiration and I'm just look forward to seeing everything that's, that's coming from you in the future. Awesome. Thank you so much, Charles. I really appreciate it. It was great to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Take care.